Many were concerned over the sudden drop, raising speculation that investors were withdrawing hot money after seeing initial election results. For his views, we're joined now by BDO Unibank's Jonathan Ravelas. Jonathan, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, one of the top stories right now, uh, particularly for the markets, is JP Morgan Global Research downgrading the Philippines to underweight and ranked it last in the order of preference in ASEAN among the major Southeast Asian markets. How concerned are you about capital flight? Oh, well, I'm actually not. It's just that uh, over the past weeks, uh, this is more merely driven by the impact of the higher inflation and the higher interest rates driven by the U.S. Fed. So this is actually the, the main concern of the markets today at this point in time. But of so, course, you have the likes uh, of uh, the twin deficits that they mentioned in their report, higher inflation, slower government spending in the quarters after the election, which uh, is transition pain, high public debt, risk of valuation uh, um, uh, and potential earnings growth disappointment. Do you agree with their concerns on what the next administration, the problems the administration uh, next faces? Well, I, I tend to agree with everything. I think it compared to President Duterte's assumption to office, uh, which was a, eventually a bed of roses, uh, the next administration would actually be uh, having a very tough uh, environment at this time, especially when you have the global uh, environment uh, having higher inflation and higher interest rates brought about by policy normalization. So uh, the key challenge really is the uncertainty of uh, more clearer plans of the government, particularly as it addressed the social, the health, and eventually economic issues that were already mentioned by J.P. Morgan. All right. Um, you mentioned about clear plans and uh, a whole lot of other issues tackling rising poverty, strengthening healthcare, dealing with inflation, uh, which is a key issue right now, and managing debt, um, which is uh, close to 13 trillion pesos. Does the former Senator Bongbong Marcos have clear plans, concrete strategies to deal with these serious issues uh, during uh, his campaign? Well, basically, his campaign was more of... Uh... Uh, broad strokes. So basically, he talked about, uh, and again, it was very ambitious, talked about build, 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 the continuation of infrastructure spending. He talked about jobs, 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 and eventually prices, prices, prices. So again, uh, there's a big difference between candidate X and president X. So it's a matter of perspective. So hopefully, uh, in the coming days, we will probably hear what, uh, what his plans are. And until such time, these plans are laid down to probably address the social uh, health and eventually the economic issues, then uh, investors will remain sidelined till we get to, to see a much clearer plan of uh, their plan of action. And, and Jonathan, from the supporters of Bong Bong Marcos, you've seen uh, his uh, inner circle. I mean, after analyzing uh, all uh, these uh, candidates' economic positions, who would likely make up his economic team? What characteristics are investors looking for in his economic team? Okay, I think over the last two presidents that we have, President Duterte and President Noy Noy Aquino, we've seen that uh, we've seen a characteristic that the economic team is actually led by one person. Mm -hmm. So he was there from beginning to end. So people is policy. So whoever he places to the economic team uh, will most likely be the one to. Uh, you know, they, the economic team is like the glue that holds the Philippine economy. So they ensure that we navigate through these rough waters. So, so I guess in uh, the Duterte administration, know, it was Secretary Dominguez, right? And in yes, the uh, Pinoy administration, it was Cesar Purisima? Yes. So who do you think will be the Cesar Purisima and the uh, Dominguez in the uh, Bongbong Marcos administration? Uh, well, I guess it's anybody's guess at this point in time. Uh, there are a lot of names that are being floated. Like? So, like who, uh, well, Jonathan? Uh, it, well, eventually we've seen uh, uh, PNB banker uh, president, no? Uh, Vic Veloso. Uh -huh. 
Who yeah. else? And then uh, one is eventually his classmate, uh, Walter Ma Wasper. Uh -huh. Do you think that these are the right people uh, to, 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 uh, to lead the finance team, to lead the economic team, and uh, are respected by the uh, international investor community? Well, I think they are, uh, mm. especially Walter comes from the biggest Mac and uh, uh, the experience of WIC uh, in the uh, foreign bank and has international exposure. Both of them are capable of uh, eventually handling uh, uh, the financial affairs of the country. All right. We saw that uh, in the Duterte administration, uh, President Duterte had a hands-off policy in terms of the economic policy. And he left it to Secretary Dominguez uh, to run the show. Uh, will uh, Bong Bong Marcos be involved very seriously and in depth in the economic policies of his administration? Well, uh, I think if we eventually follow the the steps of. Uh, President Marcos Sr., we've actually seen that uh, he's been very cohesive in uh, uh, talking to his team. No? Uh, he started all of these technocrats. So most likely, uh, he will also have a hand in uh, trying to discuss the plans. And uh, during the campaign, uh, there were times that he mentioned of a certain uh, economic plans that were used before. Uh, but again, it still needs clarity. Like uh, he talked about OPSF and eventually the uh, plans of the former uh, Marcos administration. But again, they were all touched lightly. But again, what we need to hear now is basically mm. hear them as concrete plans on how to address these things. Just like President Duterte's 10-point agenda. Thank you so much for your insights. Jonathan Ravelas from BDO Unibank.